Are you thinking about buying or selling a home or just want to know what might be going on with one of your biggest investments? Then come hang out with us for a little while. Hi, welcome to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. We're sponsored by Bricks Real Estate, Network Title, Eric Bloomstrad and Chad Preeby with Bell Bank Mortgage, Structure Tech Home Inspections, James Tolson with Country Financial and Cregan's Construction and Gray Duck Staging and Design. If you have any questions for us or real estate needs, you can always give us a call 651-303-0019. Again, 651-303-0019. You can also check us out online anytime at TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com. There you'll find all of our great free publications, the Smart Home Buyer Book, the Smart, uh, smart Seller Book, the Smart Home Buyer <laughs> Book, the Bricks Report, um, along with all of our past shows, the Market Minutes, and that great stuff. Uh, welcome to the studio, Jilly Jenkins. Thanks for coming in again. Thanks, guys. And Chad Preeby, as always. Thanks Good for to see coming you guys in. Again. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is great. We're gonna we're gonna change up the pace a little bit today with uh, breaking down the show. We're gonna start off with kind of what's happening in our market, and then get into the topic of the day, and then wrap up with some highlighted listings. Uh, so the topic of today, what we're going to get to, is, is talking about building your team when you're looking to do your next real estate transaction. This is important whether you're selling a home, buying a home, uh, as an investor, whatever it may, might be, because there is a team of people that's going to be involved with your transaction, whether you like it or not, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to happen, right? I think but, they say like 25 people yeah, touch, touch your transaction. At, at least, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, so... If you're selling a home, you might have uh, your agent and, and uh, title company, but also stagers, photographers, uh, contractors if, if needed mm -hmm. to do any repairs. And so we're going to talk about building that team and things that you want to consider there. Um, as always, most of our shows come back to things that we're covering in that smart uh, seller guide, the smart home buyer guide. So please, if you haven't had the opportunity, check out those free publications. We're not asking for any registration or anything. You can just download the PDFs online again. That's at TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com. All right, as far as the real estate news uh, this week, um, we're showing that the showings per listing average in the Twin Cities, so this is the average number of showings that's happening on any given sh uh, listing over the course of one week, it fell back again. This was kind of expected. It went down to a six, uh, or st sorry, the market meter went down to a 6.2, showings per listing down to a 3.99. Um, so per I'm week? Per week, average. Oh. Now that's, that, that is the 200 to 500K price range. Huh. Right. So a lot of people think, oh, my gosh, the market's moving so fast. Everything's selling instantaneously. No, we were actually starting to see that days on market start to tick up mm -hmm. as well. Um, new listings did um, jump up a little bit over the previous week. Uh, so the 13 county metro area was at uh, 15, 18, up to 16, 80 new listings. And it looks like that, uh, based on the newest data coming out, is going to go up uh, again this coming week. Uh, also, pending sales fell back. So these two things combined, given enough time, will start to hopefully bring inventory numbers up. That yeah. said, currently relatively flat week over week. So the next thing that plays into this is where interest rates are. Chad, what have you seen over the last week with interest rates? Yeah, thank you. Um, so interest rates, we're still sitting in the same uh, rate bucket. We're just hovering above historic lows. So Anywhere from 2875 to three and a quarter, let's say, on a conventional 30 year mortgage. Uh, there's a couple factors in there obviously, credit score, property type, uh, down payment drive that interest rate. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about here briefly is a couple changes in the, in the industry as far as products. Uh, we are now offering the borrower, borrower Smart program again. That's a true grant program where we offer $2,500 towards your down payment or closing costs. This is for low income buyers. Um, but it's available to you more. I can talk to you more about that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Also, if you're and that's in the, just at Bell. That yeah. That's so that's a Freddie Mac them. product offered by Bell Mortgage. Got it. Correct. Um, we also, uh, if you're in the market to purchase an investment property, over the last couple of months, we saw a pretty significant increase in interest rates. Um, yeah, this put a damper. I know I had some clients that were looking at investment properties, and and yeah, it was it was a, a big enough tack on to to the rates that it, it slowed a lot of people down. Definitely with it. And yeah, these are big big changes in payments. Correct. And Huge. buying power. 
Yeah, rates went up significantly. So we're going to start now seeing news today I heard was rates are going to start coming back down on the investment in second home purchases. So more news to come on that, um, as well as if you're in the market to buy a multi-unit property, two to four unit property, this is a big one, guys, 5% down minimum down payment. Mm -hmm. That's a huge change in the market. So okay. if you're looking to buy a duplex, if you're looking to uh, capitalize on equity, have someone else pay your mortgage payment for you yeah. with minimal 5% down. That's right. a huge deal. It I is. have clients that always, that's like the first thing that a first time home buyer asks me is, can we get it into a duplex and have our mortgage paid for? But it's it was like 20% down, kind of held a lot of people back. Absolutely. So that's huge. It is. Yep. So that's what I have today. Yeah. So the interest rates staying relatively flat overall. Um, and we'll, we'll see where that goes. Uh, obviously, that's one of the key factors playing into home affordability, which plays into our market meter. I mentioned that yep. a little bit earlier, um, how that came down to a 6.2. Uh, so if we look at the weekly graph, we can see that you know we're slowly slowing down. That was my topic on the uh, mastermind, the market, mm -hmm. uh, that, that the market is slowing down. And when we look at this on a month over month basis, I expect this trend to continue into probably early December. Um, however, with where inventory is, I would not be surprised to see a very early jump into our spring market. Uh, as we're looking at that market meter graph, we can see the projections that I'm putting out there is that things will start to pick up maybe in mid-December, accelerating a bit more in January into February, and then really taking off. So as a seller out there, you're probably going to want to jump into that market you know, in that mid-February to mid-March timeline as things are really ramping up. That's when we see those showings per week mm -hmm. start to pick up. For buyers out there, you want to focus on this time. This as, is as my favorite yes, time for as, buyers. Yes, as, mm -hmm. as we're yeah. bottoming out uh, with the pace of the market because with inventory down, it is going to start to pick up. All right, so that's kind of the uh, news that we have out there currently. Jumping into today's topic, building your real estate team. Huge. This is, you know, and, and this is something you want to be talking to your agent about as you're interviewing real estate agents because it's when you hire them, you might be hiring their An whole entourage, group, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and to find out what is that group that they have, right? right? Or and, or do they have it? I yeah. guess is the best way to put it. So to take into consideration what you know when hiring an agent, whether that is for uh, selling a home or buying a home, these are all the different people that might be involved uh, as far as the face-to-face the, the -face level is obviously you have your agent, you have your title company, loan officer if you're buying, home inspector if you're buying and selling if, if there is mm -hmm. a city required inspection, uh, stagers, photographers, and contractors. A lot. Yeah. Right? So I mentioned some in there, stagers, photographers, contractors, inspectors, right? You want to make sure you're thinking about this and asking, do you have stagers, photographers, yeah. contractors, inspectors that you work with that you can recommend? So that way you can do your due diligence into checking into these people, right? right. Is, is the, what is the quality that the photographers are putting out? You yeah. know, is it the real estate agent's sister who dibble dabbles in <laughs> photography, right, right? As the right. photographer, yeah. you want is it is it the agent with their iPhone? Right. Yeah. I know personally. I, I use know. a company called Spacecrafting. Look at look at what they put out. It's a great uh, uh, product. The photography is is wonderful, right? It it they they are a real estate photography company. Yeah. And so you want to make sure that that. You know, you're not just hiring the professional agent, but that the agent is working yeah. with other professionals out there. Right. Um, so the first thing, let's start out with, with hiring the agent. What you don't want to be doing is hiring an agent based on the feelings of obligation, right? A lot of yeah. people hire because of feelings. Right. You don't want to be hiring based on the feeling of obligation because it is a a friend because it is a relative yeah. right. you know I talk about the aunt Patty who's part-time who's semi-retired right that yeah. you don't want to hire an agent because of that you don't want to hire an agent because of a gimmick right and we see that all over the place yes, there's gimmicks all the time you know we'll help you pay for your move we'll pay for this piece of remodeling or or assist with the financing of it um, you know giving offers you know um, 
sight unseen, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Now, is there a time and a place for, for uh, uh, an offer that's from an investor? Absolutely. I know that's something that we, we talk about all the time, but this is something that you should be working with your professional real estate agent with talking through all of your options, not just hiring yeah. them purely because of that. Right. You also don't want to hire an agent just purely because of the sense or feeling of ease, because it might not be easy. Oh, they claim they have a buyer for my house. Hey, you know, I have this buyer. I'd like them to see your home. And you hire that agent because they say they have a buyer. Or it's the neighbor, and you think they know the neighborhood in the sense of knowing the market and all of that. Yeah. You really want to be hiring an agent based upon the value they're providing, their, their knowledge, um, their, their experience, their history. Look at their reviews. Reviews and, are big. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that you want to, to be doing your due diligence and asking the right questions. You know, it's not about who sells the home for most over list price because we know that. They could have listed it. Dramatically low right. to yeah. begin with, right. and not known that. <laughs> and had their stats. Right, you want you want to make sure that I mean, what what is their price per square foot for the for the area that they're receiving and compared to the competition? That's a great question right. to ask, mm -hmm. right? That is a good question. Um, so you want to really look at the value that agent's providing. Do they have those contractor connections? If you're looking at selling a home, do they have a, you know, a cleaner that can come in and assist? Do they have a handyman mm -hmm. if that's needed? Do they have somebody that can come do... Mow the lawn. Right, even something mm -hmm. like that. What, what is their, their database that they can reach out to? That's the kind of ease that you want. Not the ease because it happens to be a neighbor or it happens to be somebody who says they have a buyer. Right. And those tend to be the thing. most stressful deals. Well, we got oh, to take we, we got to take a commercial break real oh, yeah. quick. When we come back, <laughs> we'll get into um, you know picking the loan officer, picking title companies, inspectors, and so forth. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruben with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Everyone knows you should have a home inspection before you buy a home, but we've heard of home buyers being encouraged to skip the home inspection in this crazy market to make their purchase offer more attractive. Now they're facing tens of thousands of dollars in unexpected repairs. I'm telling you now, don't skip the home inspection. Here at Structure Tech, we can get your home inspected quickly and we offer a full line of services. Visit us online at structuretech.com to learn more. Clickbait, there is no such thing as today's rate. Mortgages and mortgage rates are individual to you. Chad Preby and Eric Bloomstrand with Bell Bank Mortgage are here to show you the formula to get your best rate. Once you know this formula, you can mortgage shop with confidence. Find us online at chadpreby.com. That is chadpreby.com, NMLS 1462493, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Kurt Duckwall with Bricks Real Estate and the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Buying or selling a home is one of the biggest financial transactions people make. Before you make your next move, download our free smart home buyer or smart seller guides to give you the edge in our real estate market. From deal hunting to knowing the right repairs for maximizing value, these free guides have it all. Check them out and more at BricksTwinCities.com under publications. Not every title company is the same. There are many people involved with each real estate transaction and all of them need to be in the loop or a closing may get delayed. This is why the people at Network Title strive to provide swift scheduling and communication between the buyers, sellers, agents, and lenders. We know moving can be stressful, however your closing does not need to be. Check us out online at network-title.com. Welcome back to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Well, we're talking about building the team today. Who is the group of professionals that you're going to work with when you're starting your next real estate transaction? In the first segment, we talked about where the market's at. You know, for sellers out there right now, this is the perfect time to be having that conversation. Because mm -hmm. as we were saying, if you want to time the market correctly, you're going to have, from this point in time, about three to four and a half months uh, to get your home ready if yeah. you want to take advantage of the spring market because we know that the spring market doesn't happen when it's green outside. That's why I always say if you want to 
if you want to make some green, don't wait until, don't it's, wait green. until it's green. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Or if you want to miss out or on Or be planning ahead and thinking, do I need to get pictures right now of the exterior of my home right. before yeah. it's snow when I list it with my agent? Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually have a client. Uh, we're planning on that right now. I have uh, a photography session set up to it's go smart. out there and get it because we're going to list that home when that uh, mid-February timeline comes out, when the market is moving and, and accelerating because it's, it's always nice to to sell on an inclining market, not a declining market time. Yeah. Right. Um, so you actually mentioned a great point about sales and how when interviewing real estate agents, you know, we talked about some of the other questions, but sometimes they'll use the stats of, you know, I sell 100 homes a year, 150 yeah. homes a year, but then in that situation... You might be working with their new buyer agent that's just freshly licensed, you know, it, you, you need to ask the agent, who will I be face to face with yep. when I'm looking for houses? Who will I be face to face with when we're going over the listing documents, when we're talking about strategy for listing the mm -hmm. home? Um, a lot of agents are very high producing, but they might not be the person you're actually dealing with. It might be right. par part of a team. Who's in that team? How experienced is that team? Right, and that, that's that's a huge point. How yeah. experienced is the team? Because teams can be very successful. Yep. Just like Absolutely. individual agents can be very successful. There's, there's mm -hmm. bonuses to each side. Yep. Right. But you got to know if you're working with a team, well, who will I be working with? What are their experiences? Right. Because right. just because the head honcho that you talk to in an interview is who tells you they do 100 sales, you might be working with Aunt Patty, who just retired and got her license for fun. And right. she's out of town. <laughs> and she's time. going on vacation, by the way, when you start looking. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's not an uncommon scenario, is it? <laughs> no, it's no, actually it's really very not. common. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of moving on to the next piece, right? So you, you, you narrow down, you pick that agent, and uh, it, let's say you're on the buy side, or maybe the sell and buy side. Yeah. You, want to, you want to start reaching out and uh, interviewing loan officers. Who's gonna help you through that process? Mm -hmm. You know, right. I heard a stat one time of something like the average American spends more time shopping for a TV than they do shopping for their mortgage. That's I guarantee scary. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee that's yeah. true. And I've told clients more so even than myself or any agent that they would hire, loan officer and the lender you're gonna work through is your make or break. That is your number one. Right. Who's gonna get you there to yeah. closing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got a couple of things I wanted to just run by you. Uh, when you are interviewing your lender, there's a couple of questions I want you to ask your lender. One is their hours of operation. Are they an eight to five lender? You're stealing my question. Oh, no, I'm, just kidding. A, no, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. Go yeah. right that ahead. Absolutely, that's a deal. great yeah. question. Right? Yeah. Hours of operation and, and nothing are they against... willing to give you your cell their cell phone number? And if they're not, next. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I hear it so often, and I've actually got a couple deals um, this past week here from. Lenders that operate 8 to 5 Monday through Friday. So they're not available in the evenings, nor are they available on Saturday and Sunday when you're most likely to And that's when transactions offer. are happening. Right. Yeah, that's when we're doing showing. Yeah. Yep. Right? Buyer beware. If your loan officer is only available 8 to 5 Monday through Friday, you're going to want to keep looking for a different loan yeah. officer. Uh, number two is who services your loan? So after closing, who am I going to make my payment to? That's a big deal. Uh, number three is... Changes. Yeah, exactly. What is the loan officer's track record? What, um, and this isn't always easy to find out, but just because they offer the lowest interest rate, interest rate in the market, are you going to close on time? So these are questions that you want to bring up. Not are they going to close that interest yeah. rate? Are they even going to close at that interest rate, right? Yeah. So yeah. preferably what you want to do is work with a lender that's going to ask you for a lot of information up front to make you successful through the process. So um, it's not always about the, the lowest interest rate, and like Kirk and I talk about, uh, it's the formula to get that that interest rate, right? Right. So, and I've had clients where they've worked with lenders where they do the bait and switch. Here's the interest rate. Sign up with me now. You're too deep to bail. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They wait until you're down to a couple of weeks before the and transaction. And then they say, oh, by the way, here's the interest rate that we're going to give you now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing Which too, is a dramatic difference. It, it, it happens. It's scary. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing too is is not only buyers but the seller. You want to be prepared with financing on the property you're purchasing. Um, I know we talk about this quite often as the recasting option. Um, if you're teeter-tottering on whether you wanna go contingent on the sale or non-contingent because of your down payment option, yeah. you could put 5% down on the purchase of your home and then recast that mortgage to the lower balance, drop PMI after you sell your home. So if you do have that 5% down option, maybe you're thinking 20% down originally, 
but you only have 5% down because you're not going to sell your home prior to purchasing, you can do that 5% down and then recast, drop the PMI. And that's a huge deal where we're, we hear a lot of advertising, radio, and on the TV saying, we'll buy your house for you so you can get into your next house. You don't need to take a lower priced offer from an entity that's going to buy the house from you when you can do it with your lender with your own money too. Yeah, I mean, these, exactly. the, these different models are out there. They're there to make a profit. Yeah, right. right. They're, they're, they're companies that say they'll, 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 you know, give you that offer right away. You don't need to worry about it. Yeah, well, take your time finding your new house. We'll buy the house for you. Right, right. I mean, it won't the, be contingent. The, the averages. Um, because I, I ran all the stats um, for 2020, it was something like 14 to 19 percent under what the the current market average and value that's was. That's worse. That's, that's getting worse then because mm -hmm. I ran numbers a couple years ago and it was then nine to 12 percent less. Yep. So it's actually getting greedier. Well, and it's not surprising <laughs> because these companies are, are having a hard time making a, a, a profit. Uh, with that, so then they're they're turning that right back to the consumer. So you want to make sure you're talking right. through. So your lender your can do that option for you with your own money, right. without losing that investment of equity, like the equity loss, essentially. Right. Correct. Yeah. To look at that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, the key the key is understanding you know who you're going to be working with, just like the the agent and interviewing the team. You know, you want to know are are you working direct? Is it just a bank? Are they the only one that's offering the financing? Is it a correspondent lender where they're reaching out to uh, many different lending entities, but still they're kind of moving it through the process? Or or is it a, a broker where they're basically taking the file and just pawning it off, and and they have to call a one eight hundred number hands after so many times? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which can be really frustrating too. So I guess a good question for people to ask their lender too when they're interviewing them is. Do I stay with you? Yeah, thanks for bringing to, that up, To the guys. closing table. That goes up on the list, actually, of mm -hmm. questions you want to ask because a lot of the big box lenders or brokers, uh, correspondent lenders, it's great. You establish that relationship with your loan officer up front, but you don't hear from them often. Uh, it's going to a, a back-end room, and they don't really control the process at all. Appraisal and those are timing. stressful, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. when, and when you work with, with a reputable local lender, and that's a key, local lender. Local lender. Yeah. They're going to work with you from the application through the closing. Yeah, they have a team behind the scenes, but they're going to be communicating with you directly. You're going to have their cell phone number you can call seven days a week. That's a top priority question, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's going to ensure your success through your process. So, I mean, the easy way, I mean, if... <laughs> Thank you. If you're calling yeah. a 1-800 number, entering an extension, that's probably a no-go, yeah. right, as, as you're out there shopping yeah. around. You know, I like if they have an office or a place that you can meet, obviously, with COVID, we're doing a lot more Zoom meetings for stuff like that. But, right. you know, that, that they, they have that, they're willing to do that, um, and available, again, after 5 o'clock, you know. Yeah. So I think, you know, and, and really willing to break down all of your different options. We talked about recast. We talked earlier about you know, um, the borrower smarts, just bringing up the different options, going through what's going to work best for you. Then after that, you want to, you know, you want to make sure you have a good title company. A good title company keeps mm -hmm. the, 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 the transaction. This is one where you, you can talk to your loan officer, you talk to your real estate agent. Um, I can't say enough how much I like network title. Amazing. It's almost like I have another assistant working for me. I know they sponsor the show, but I've, I've worked with them for years. And that's another point to when shopping for a title company that you look and you show that they have a good positive reputation long time yeah. in the industry. Huge. Who yeah, are so. their underwriters? Yep. Do they outsource their underwriting or can they uh, call up their teammate and say what's going on here? Yeah. Right. That's a big deal. I know that's kind of confusing a little bit yep. deeper, but who are your underwriters? Are they on your team or are they somewhere else in a different state? Yeah. Right. You know? Um, that is a huge thing actually. And, and when I met up with you, Kirk, you introduced me to Network Title. Yeah. And I know, again, they're a sponsor of a show, so I'm not trying to sell Network Title. But network, oh, we can. That's, but, that's yeah, okay. But that's part of it. But, because they do a good job. But <laughs> how you get to these um, trusted sources is through your real estate agent. Okay? And loan and, officer. And loan officer. Mm -hmm. But when, when your realtor is telling you or, or re requesting that you contact these people, it's because they've had a successful um, process with these folks many times over yeah. and over again. It's, um, it's nice when, you know, the, the, the buyer or the seller, they, they, they know where the closing is. They know when the closing is oh. well, well in advance. Yeah. The agent knows where everything is, what everything is going on. And that if there are yeah. any issues, and that's why we hire these title companies, right. that they 
um, they're bringing it up as soon as they find out about it, not yeah. something where, I mean, I've had just too many, too many transactions where, you know, with these big box lenders, where I find out there's a closing delay the day of closing, right. or I find yeah. out there's an issue right. with title the day before closing. Yeah. This yep. is not usually when you want the stuff to show up. No. Um, you know, and I that also goes, runs back quick to the agent stuff, like the agents that you're interviewing. Is your agent going to be in contact and kind of making sure everything's lined up throughout yep. the whole transaction? Right. Because a lot's out of our hands, but we're still calling, making sure stuff's getting done. Mm -hmm. And going back, the other right, people right. in the team, you know, do they have a, a stager if you're selling your home, somebody that can walk through it, or they can pull up their website and look at what is the product they have? Is yeah. that something they're paying for in their commission, or are they charging separately for that? Those are good questions you want to make sure that you're asking. Do you they have will contractors? Leave so much on the table that you could have gotten more for an offer if you don't stage, honestly. Oh, staging, staging sta is huge. It makes so. a huge difference. Huge. And a lot of people think, you know, it, it really has to do with the photography. Staging is done for the photography for the photography for what we're putting online. It's not so much when somebody is in the home. It does help in the home, but more so it's what gets people, it gets people in the door. Ex excited. Right. Well, as always, show goes by <laughs> so quick. Doesn't There's happen. one quick yeah. quick announcement here. Uh, 823 McKnight Road. Check it out if you have an opportunity. St. Paul Three Car Garage. Great oh my Rambler. Gosh. All right, everybody. Have a great week. My name is James Tobson with Country Financial. Anyone can sell you insurance. However, is it going to be the insurance you need? When life pops up with its surprises, you want the right coverage. When it comes time to find or renew your policy, give me a call. I would love to review your existing policy and show you what I can do for you. You can email me at james.tobson at countryfinancial.com or give me a call at 651-365-3408. Not every title company is the same. There are many people involved with each real estate transaction and all of them need to be in the loop or a closing may get delayed. This is why the people at Network Title strive to provide swift scheduling and communication between the buyers, sellers, agents, and lenders. We know moving can be stressful, however your closing does not need to be. Check us out online at network-title.com. People always ask realtors, what is your commission? But what they should be asking is what is your rate of return? Commissions only vary by a couple of percent from agent to agent. However, the price per square foot you get just based on their experience and the quality of marketing they use can vary by 10% or more. At Bricks Real Estate, our agents use the right marketing and have the experience to get you top dollar for your house. See what we can do for you at BricksTwinCities.com. Hi, I'm Becca, owner of Grey Duck Staging. With today's home buyers beginning their journey exclusively online, the look and feel of your home matters more than ever. Whether it's a simple in-home consultation, a refresh using your current furniture, or a whole home staging, our goal is always the same. Showing your home in the best light and helping you achieve the highest sales price possible. To learn more, visit us at greyduckstaging.com or check us out on Instagram at greyduckstaging.